The police officer's name is Tony, and the movie starts with a rowdy guy boarding a bus insisting that an elderly woman vacate her seat. Other passengers watch silently. However, a girl sitting in the back is recording the incident. The rowdy threatens her, saying if she wants to keep her phone safe, she should turn off the camera. Then the scene shows the movie's hero, Jesu, glaring at the rowdy. The rowdy arrogantly asks, Hey, why are you staring at me? I'll break your limbs, then you'll understand. Jesu stands up, scared, and apologizes. Sorry, sir, it was my mistake. In his mind, he thinks, do whatever you want. My stop has arrived. I'm getting off. Saying this, he gets off the bus. The girl then says, sir, your t-shirt says, Jim Trainer, but you didn't say anything about the injustice happening on the bus. He replies, fighting against injustice is not my job and walks away. Suddenly, she hits him on the back and runs away, but even then, Jasu doesn't react like a hero. In the next scene, Jasu is at his gym, training some kids in martial arts. He receives a call from a doctor who informs him that a donor has been found. Hearing this, Jasu is overjoyed and shouts in happiness. Jasu's daughter needs a heart transplant and today a donor has been found. The doctor tells him that although a donor has been found, he needs to arrange the money immediately. Jasu says, you are like a god to me. Just prepare for the surgery, I'll sell the gym, and bring all the money. Meanwhile, Tony goes to meet his girlfriend, Tina, who sells fish. She insists she will only come once all the fish are sold. Tony quietly leaves and asks a passing woman to buy all the fish for him. She does as requested, and Tina happily goes home with Tony. This happens every day. Now, Jasu is taking a bath, and his daughter, whom we'll call Chutki, is hitting a stuffed toy. She seems to have a passion for fighting, but Jasu has strictly forbidden her from jumping around because her heart is weak. When Jasu comes out of the bath, she stands quietly. What were you doing? He asks. Nothing, Papa. I was just standing here quietly, she replies. But Jasu knows better and scolds her. How many times have I told you not to play like this? Your heart is weak. She becomes sad, but Jasu consoles her. Once you have the operation, you'll be fine, and then you can play as much as you want. This cheers her up, and Jasu gets her ready for school. A few years ago, Jesu's wife passed away, and since then he has been taking care of his daughter alone. He takes her to school, but she starts running. Jesu tells her to walk slowly, holding his chest, and she walks slowly. An angry man comes to the police station and shouts at Tony, How many days has it been since I filed the complaint, and you still haven't found my dog? Is the police sleeping? Tony calmly replies, Sir, please give us some time. We will definitely find your dog. We will definitely find your son. I mean, sorry, your dog. That night, Tony goes out to search for the dog. He reaches a place where some men are kidnapping girls. Tony follows their car into a tunnel but finds Jesu standing there. Tony says, I need to check this car. But Jesu says, look, I'm a gym trainer. I'm not who you think I am. Saying this, he drives off. The next day, Jasu drops Chutki at school. Tony sees her going into a building instead of the school, but decides to follow Jasu, as that's more important. Tony takes a photo of Jasu's car in front of the gym, but Jasu scolds him, what are you doing near my car? Tony leaves without saying anything. Later, Tony is buying something at a supermarket when he sees some men from a club who were kidnapping girls last night. He thinks of following them, but misses their car. That night, Tony and his friend Michael are drinking outside when Tony drops his apples. Jesu, who is passing by with his daughter, doesn't help. Tony tells Michael, look how arrogant he is. I think he's involved in some illegal activities. I keep seeing his car around. Michael, who is also a police officer, says, I know him. He's a good person who runs his gym and doesn't interfere in others' matters. That night, Tony goes to the supermarket to wait for the gang. He sees Jesu talking on the phone near the club. Tony follows him, but hears a girl's scream. He leaves Jesu and goes in the direction of the scream. He sees the club members beating a girl, and she throws her mobile into the bushes while getting beaten. Tony realizes there must be something important on that mobile. He secretly takes the mobile. Tony and Michael connect the mobile to a computer and find out that the gang has kidnapped many girls and this girl has recorded their video. They were torturing that girl, and meanwhile, Tony received a call. Tony wanted to buy a house, and today he was supposed to get the keys. He went to get the keys and was very happy. Michael called him to a parking lot where some evidence had been found. Tony also went there. It shows that Jasu bought a toy for his daughter, but his car wasn't there. There was a notice saying his car had been towed to the police station. Jasu got very angry because he had parked it correctly. Just then, he saw Tony and thought it must be Tony's doing. Wondering why Tony was always after his car, Jasu ran after him. Tony reached the parking lot Michael told him about, but instead of Michael, there was a gang there. They beat Tony, asking him where the memory card was. Tony somehow escaped, but got hit by a car. Michael, who was actually working with the gang, arrived and scolded them, saying he only wanted the memory card. 
not for them to kill Tony. At that moment, Jisoo arrived and tried to attack Tony, but they both ended up being taken to the hospital by an ambulance. Tony went into a coma. Shockingly, Tony's soul left his body. His soul was very troubled, wondering what would happen to him, whether he would survive or not. He went around asking everyone if they could see him. The next morning, Jasu regained consciousness and tried to get up. The nurse told him to get up slowly as he had a severe head injury. He wanted to see his daughter, but found out she had been sitting by his side all night. Jasu told his daughter she shouldn't stay up all night and decided to send her to a friend's house for better care. When he stepped outside, he saw Tony's soul standing in front of him. Startled, Jasu ran away, realizing he could see Tony's soul. Tony's soul kept asking if Jasu could see him, but Jasu got angry and threatened to break his face if he came near him again. When Jasu pushed him, his hand went through Tony's body, making Jasu scream, ghost, ghost. When he regained consciousness, Tony's soul was still there. Jasu asked the nurse if she could see the man in front of them, but she said no one else was there except them, suggesting his head injury might be affecting his mind. Tony's soul pleaded for help, explaining that his soul was out of his body, but Jasu, frightened, ran away. Michael, who was in league with the gang, visited Tony in the hospital and told Tina to take care of him and call him if anything was needed. He also told her to ask Tony about the memory card, which was crucial evidence for a case. Michael received a call but ignored it. Tony's soul realized Michael's true nature and followed him. Michael met with the gang leader, who turned out to be the police chief involved in a big operation of kidnapping and selling girls. The police chief demanded the memory card from Michael, threatening him if he didn't find it. The gang then targeted Jasu, believing he knew something about the memory card since he was there that day. Tony's soul warned Jasu about the gang's plans, but Jasu didn't want to listen. The gang attacked Jasu, but he fought back and escaped. Finally, he started believing Tony's soul. Tony's soul saved Jasu from the gang, and that night, Tony's soul sat by his body in the hospital. Tina, upset about Tony's condition, discovered she was pregnant and showed Tony the test report, pleading with him to wake up soon. Tony's soul became emotional, seeing how much Tina cared for him. Tina found a memory card in the room and wanted to call Michael to inform him, but Tony's soul, knowing Michael's betrayal, tried to warn her not to trust Michael. However, no one but Jasu could hear him. Meanwhile, Jasu received a call from a friend informing him that Chutki was missing. Jasu, worried, immediately went out to find her. Tony's soul asked him to warn his girlfriend about Michael, but Jasu was too worried about his daughter to help Tony. Jasu searched everywhere, but couldn't find Chutki. Tony's soul told him he saw her entering a building near the school. They found Chutki unconscious in the building, having fainted due to chest pain while drawing. Jasu rushed her to the hospital, where they were told she needed immediate surgery to survive. Devastated, Jasu felt helpless. Tony's soul sat by him, sharing his sorrow. It starts with a flashback of Jangu. Until now, Jangu was shown as someone who didn't help others, but the reason for this is revealed in the flashback. One day, Jangu was traveling with his family early in the morning before sunrise. On the way, he saw an overturned car. Jangu immediately stopped his car and ran to help. He saved one man but felt there might be someone else inside the car. As he tried to rescue them, a truck came from the opposite direction and crashed into Jangu's car. Although Jangu had parked his car on the roadside, his wife died in the accident and his daughter's heart was damaged. In the present, Jangu says that if he hadn't helped the passenger in that car, his wife would be with him today and his daughter wouldn't be in this condition. Since then, he stopped intervening in any situation, even to help. Tina gives Michael the memory card, and Michael is deeply saddened by Tony being in a coma. He is also angry with the police chief and his gang because they made Tony a living corpse for a memory card. Tony tries to punch Michael, but hits a nearby dustbin instead, causing it to shake. Tony, who couldn't touch anything, managed to move the dustbin. As he used all his strength, his heart rate started changing. The doctor tells Tina that Tony's condition is getting worse every day. Hearing this, Tina becomes very sad remembering the happy moments spent with Tony. Tony follows her, and suddenly, a gang abducts Tina, leaving poor Tony unable to do anything. Meanwhile, Jangu is worried because he doesn't have money for his daughter's surgery, and the donor's heart has been given to someone else. Tony seeks help from Jangu to save Tina, but Jangu says nothing. Tony leaves in despair, but then Jangu stops him and agrees to help. Tony had noted the car's number, and through it, they locate the car and its location. The police chief had tied up Tina there. Michael, who blames the police chief for Tony's condition, refused to give the memory card to the police chief. So, 
they kidnapped Tina to threaten Michael and get the memory card back. Tony, his friend, and Janggu arrive at the harbor. They press a lever to enter, but snow starts falling, indicating it is the wrong lever. Tony finds Tina in a room along with other girls kidnapped by the police chief. Tony informs Janggu, and they fight the police chief's men freeing the girls. One of the police chief's men escapes, and Tony follows him to the police chief's location, informing Janggu. Janggu beats the police chief severely, and then the police arrive and arrest Janggu because the police chief is their senior officer. Michael brings crime department officers there. Feeling guilty for Tony's condition, Michael surrenders and gives the crime department information about the police chief's illegal activities. The police chief points a gun at them, but Tony's spirit sees a dustbin and remembers moving it that day. Using all his strength, he tries to press the lever multiple times and finally succeeds. Snow falls on the police chief, and Janggu beats him up. The crime department officers arrest the police chief and his gang, saving Tina and the other girls. Tony thanks Janggu for saving Tina and asks for one last favor, to take his girlfriend to a house he bought for her and give her the keys. Janggu gives Tina the keys and tells her to close her eyes. When she opens them, she sees Tony's spirit. Tony tells her that he doesn't want to leave her, but fate can't be changed. He asks her to take care of herself and their child, and to seek help from Janggu without hesitation. He tells her he had dreamed of a happy life with her, but his dreams shattered suddenly. He assures her that even after his death, he will always watch over her. At the hospital, tears fall from comatose Tony's eyes. Although Chutki didn't get a heart donor, the doctors decided to transplant Tony's heart into her, and Tina agreed. A heart specialist is called for the surgery. Janggu recognizes the doctor as the man he saved from the car accident years ago. The doctor also finds Janggu's face familiar and asks if they have met before. Janggu tells him that he saved him from a car accident a few years ago and called an ambulance. The doctor remembers and thanks Janggu for saving his life. I remember that when I regained consciousness, I asked everyone who had saved me, but no one mentioned anything about you. By the way, who is that girl undergoing the operation? Jasu says that she is my daughter. The doctor says, now she is not just your daughter, she is also my daughter. Don't worry at all. I won't charge a single fee for this surgery, and you don't need to worry about the money. Saying this, he goes into the operating room and successfully saves Chutki after performing the surgery. For all these years, Jasu had been blaming himself for not being able to help, thinking that if he had just focused on his work that day, his wife would still be alive. But today, in real life, days go by. And one day, Django is on a bus when the same troublemaker is harassing another elderly person. This time, Django stands up from his seat, but the troublemaker thinks he won't do anything. The troublemaker even says, hey, what's up? Has your stop arrived? Get out. Jisoo replies, yes, my stop has arrived, but your stop has also arrived. And then he beats up the troublemaker on the bus and throws him out. All the passengers cheer for Jisoo. So what happened was the man who had been reluctant to help anyone now threw himself into helping everyone with full enthusiasm. One day, Tina, who is pregnant, comes to his gym. As soon as she sees Chutki, she hugs her and shows her a drawing where she has drawn Tony, Tina, and their little baby. Then, Tony hears Chutki's heartbeat and realizes, oh, this is Tony's heartbeat. Hearing this, Tina gains the courage to believe that Tony is with her. And then, it shows that Tony's spirit is very happy seeing this from the sky. And with this, friends, the movie ends here. So, friends, how did you like this movie? Please let us know your opinion by commenting. If you liked the video and the explanation, please like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video. Take care, and thanks for watching.